India's Air Force has slowly become one of the world's largest. This is the result of the country's growing economy and the need for maintaining regional stability. India, as South Asia's largest country and one of Asia's largest economies, must project power to protect its interests and maintain a balance of power in the region. One of the most essential pieces of a country's air force, however, is its fighter jets. These are the backbone of any modern air force. So, India having advanced fighter jets is essential for ensuring its national security. But the question is, are India's fighter jets actually strong? Can they project power in the region? Or are they just small and weak? Well, let's talk about the fighter jets currently deployed by India's Air Force and see just how strong they are. Prior to 2015, India's Air Force was dwindling down. It was mainly composed of an aging Russian fleet. The Indian Air Force required 42 squadrons to effectively counter the possibility of a two-front war with China and Pakistan, but its strength has dwindled to just 31 squadrons. This meant that they needed to acquire newer and better fighter jets. These fighter jets were the likes of the Mekonian Gurvik MiG-21, MiG-29, and the Sukhoi fighters. The MiG-21 has played a monumental role in India's Air Force history. However, in recent years, this very aircraft has fallen behind compared to other fighter jets. India is even expected to officially retire these by 2025 after serving the country for nearly six decades. The MiG-21 first entered service with the IFA in 1965 on a trial basis, and by 1966, it had become a significant part of the fleet. From around 1970 to the mid-2000s, the MiG-21 was the backbone of India's fighter force until the growing presence of Su-30 Mk-1s began to take center stage. The MiG-21 was licensed-built in India from 1966 to approximately 1988. The MiG-21 earned praise for its maneuverability, climb rate, and combat effectiveness, even being favored over Western aircraft by some test pilots. Its variants, including the MiG-21FL, MiG-21M, MiG-21BIS, and the upgraded MiG-21 Bison, played critical roles in India's air defense and saw action in several conflicts. Besides the MiG-21, the IAF had also acquired the MiG-29. They were the first international customers to do so. They placed an order for over 66 aircraft in 1980, even while it was still in development. Since its induction into the Indian Air Force in 1985, the MiG-29 has undergone numerous upgrades, including new avionics, engines, and radar systems. Despite being in service for over three decades, the MiG-29 remains a formidable fighter in the IAS fleet. Compared to its predecessors, the MiG-21, the MiG-29 has a solid operational record. Initially developed as an air superiority fighter in the 1970s, the MiG-29 has proven to be a versatile, multi-role aircraft capable of handling various missions. Today, the IAF operates around 60 MiG-29s across three squadrons. The MiG-29, along with the Su-30 Mk-1 and other aircraft, continues to serve as a frontline fighter. Despite being an older aircraft, the MiG-29 has fewer operational issues when compared to other MiG variants, which has helped maintain its relevance in the IAF's fleet. Aside from these MiG fighter jets, the IAF also deploys another Russian-made aircraft. This is known as the Sukhoi Su-30 Mk-1, which is a multi-role combat fighter aircraft developed collaboratively by the Sukhoi Design Bureau of Russia and Hedustin Aeronautics Limited HAL. The development of the Su-30 Mk-1 for the IAF began in 1995. Initially, Sukhoi and the Irkutsk Aircraft Production Association, now Aircrute Corporation, were responsible for the aircraft's design and production. Between 1995 and 1988, Sukhoi built two prototypes, with the first prototype, the Su-31-1, taking its maiden flight in July 1977. Production commenced in the Irkutsk plant in 2000, and the first pre-production aircraft flew in November of the same year. In October of 2000, India signed a Memorandum of Understanding MOU, with Russia, paving the way for the licensed product of the Su-30MK-1s at HAL's facilities. The first HAL-assembled Su-30MK-1 rolled out in November of 2004, and the first two aircraft from this production line were delivered to the IAF in March of 2005. In 2007, the IAF placed an additional order with HAL for 40 more Su-30MK-1s. Further expanding the fleet, HAL signed a contract in December of 2012 with the Ministry of Defense and Rosoboron Export for the production and delivery of 42 more Su-30 Mk-1s, bringing the total to 224 ordered aircraft. As of January 2020, the IAF operated 260 Su-30 Mk-1s. Beyond Russia, the IAF also has several other fighter jets that they have acquired from other countries. One of these is France. France has played a role in IAF history. One of these aircrafts that India acquired from France is the Dassault Mirage 2000. The Dassault Mirage 2000 is a French single-engine fourth-generation jet fighter developed by Dassault Aviation. 
Initially designed in the late 1970s as a lightweight fighter for the French Air Force, it quickly evolved into a multi-role aircraft. With several variants and over 600 aircraft built, the Mirage 2000 has served nine nations, proving its versatility and reliability. The IAF acquired these aircraft back when Pakistan acquired F-16 aircrafts from the US in the 1980s. This acquisition by Pakistan pushed IAF to urgently acquire modern fleets. Their MiG-21s were outclassed by the F-16. After evaluating the Mirage 2000, India placed an order with the Sult in October of 1982 for 36 single-seat Mirage 2000 HSs and 4 twin-seat Mirage 2000 THs, with an option for additional aircraft. Impressed by the success of the Mirage 2000, the Indian government placed an additional order for 10 more aircraft in 2004, bringing the total fleet to 50 jets. In 2011, a contract was signed to upgrade the existing Mirage 2000s to the Mirage 2000-5 MK standard, extending their service life until 2030. The other France-made jet that the IAF operates is the newer Dassault Rafale. The Indian government back in 2016 had signed a deal with French aircraft manufacturer Dassault Aviation for a 7.87 billion euro agreement to purchase 36 Rafale multi-role fighters. These new Rafale multi-role fighters are now the backbone of India's fighter jets. By 2023, the Indian government had also selected the Dassault Rafale once more for the Indian Navy. They will have 26 Rafale aircrafts. This will make India the first nation, aside from France, to operate both versions of the Rafale, reinforcing its dominance in both aerial and maritime domains and ensuring its sovereignty. Finally, the most important fighter jet that India currently possesses is their HAL Tejas. These are the face of India's fighter jet future. The Tejas Mark I is a 4.5 generation, lightweight, high agility, supersonic, multi-role fighter aircraft that officially entered service with the Indian Air Force in July 2016. The aircraft was designed and developed by the Defense Research and Development Organizations, DRDO, Aeronautical Development Agency, ADA, under the Light Combat Aircraft, LCA program, with Hedustin Aeronautics Limited, HAL, serving as the prime industrial contractor. While the Tejas Mark I is a huge milestone for the IAF and the entire Indian national defense, they are by no means the only one that is helping push India's defense industry to the next level. One more aircraft of vital importance is the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA. In 2024, the Cabinet Committee on Security approved the development of five AMCA prototypes at an initial cost of over RS 15,000 crore. This is about 1.8 billion US dollars. This AMCA will position India to have its very own fifth generation stealth fighter. The first AMCA prototype is expected to roll out in the next four years, with its maiden flight scheduled for the following year. Full-scale production by Hedustin Aeronautics Limited is anticipated to begin around 2035, with the Indian Air Force planning to induct seven squadrons, 126 jets, of the AMCA. The AMCA will feature advanced stealth technologies, including a serpentine air intake, an internal weapons bay, radar-absorbing materials, and conformal antennas. It will also be equipped with data fusion, multi-sensor integration, and AESA radars, enabling it to achieve supersonic cruise speeds without afterburners. Initially, the first two AMCA squadrons will be powered by GE-F414 engines, while the subsequent Mark II squadrons will feature more powerful 110KN engines, with companies like GE, Safran, and Rolls-Royce in contention for development. The AMCA program will follow the induction of the Tejas Mark-1A and Mark-2 jets, which are essential for the IAF, currently operating with only 31 fighter squadrons out of the 42.5 authorized. The IAF's fleet currently includes 40 Tejas Mark I jets with 83 Tejas Mark I-A fighters set for delivery soon, followed by another 97 jets. Additionally, the Tejas Mark II, powered by GE-F414 engines, will begin deliveries after the completion of the Mark I-A orders eventually leading to the AMCA's induction. So, just how strong are Indian fighter jets? Well, they are indeed strong. But anyway, do let us know what you think down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.